Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. Then they led him away to crucify him. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. And Jesus cried out again in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. Hello, hello, hi everyone, how's it going? How's everyone uh, Everyone doing? My name is Minister Isaac Brown. Uh, thank you all for viewing. Uh, I am super excited to have the opportunity to share a word with you. All praises to God, um, honor and respect to Pastor Brown, my GBBC family. Thank you all for giving me the opportunity to share a quick word with you on today. I'm not gonna hold you long. I'm gonna pray and then get right into it, amen? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Bless those who are watching right now. Bless me, Father God. Help us, Lord. I, we thank you. We give you the glory and the praise. Thank you for your grace and mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, let me paint the picture here where I am a little bit here. Jesus is hanging on the cross, right? He's struggling to breathe. Uh, uh, he's struggling. Uh, he's hanging down. His arms are out. His weight is holding him down. His nails is in his wrist. He's trying to raise himself to 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 get uh, breath, to breathe. He has limitless pain, excruciating pain, his twisted cramps. He's just going through so much during this time here on the cross. And in, and, and in Mark, the 15th chapter, the 13, uh, 33rd verse and 34th verse, 33rd, it says, at noon, a darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, technically, Jesus wasn't alone, alone, but Jesus was on the cross and he was expressing the human anguish. He was he was expressing the experience that he was feeling at this time of agony. He expresses the wrath of sin that he's going through, that we go through in our lives as well uh, to show how he can relate to us, that he feel you like I feel your pain. I, I feel what you're going through. But this particular saying that he was saying uh, also is a cross reference to the uh, book of Psalms. That's right. Psalms, the 22nd uh, uh, chapter, you looked at David also said the exact same thing uh, in that chapter. So Psalms 22 and 1, it says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me so far from my cries of anguish? So David uh, um, wrote this on the 22nd chapter saying that he was crying out to God to save him from the, uh, the taunts and the torments of his enemies. And in the last 10 or so verses, he's thanking God and, and thanking him for rescuing him. Many times David found himself uh, with impossible circumstances, uh, kind of wondering why God was not rescuing him immediately. Uh, but just as Jesus was quoting uh, uh, things on, on that cross, we find ourselves when we're in difficult situations, quoting Bible uh, um, scriptures as well. 
Some like uh, the Lord is my shepherd or as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Right. We've we've said these things before to help to encourage ourselves, encourage those around us, uplift or in this case, Jesus, just to relate to us, to know that what we're going through. I understand this is this is a popular scripture back in that time. And, 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 and Jesus felt the need that it was time for him to say that. So when Jesus is, is saying these words, of course, as I said, he, he, he is showing that he can relate to us. And also while he was on the cross, he asked the three letter word that we probably hear from some of our kids. If you have younger kids is asking why, why, why are you forsaking me? Why is this happening? And there are times in our own life that we ask ourselves why we ask God, why am I going through this? This this mess, this certain situation. Why am I experiencing this this sickness? Or why is this happening in my life? Sometimes we already know the answer to what we're going through, but in the times that we don't, we have to realize that sometimes it may be a lesson. It's a lesson that we may have to learn. You know, for example, um, the um, as I was a kid, my mom told me don't touch the stove. And I was like, why not? Why should not touch the stove? Why should not touch that iron? And sure enough, I realized that if I touched that iron, I would burn myself. And that was a lesson learned that I knew that I would never do again. And sometimes we may go through certain things in life that may teach us a lesson that we'll never do that again. You know, I've learned lessons from watching other people like, Lord, you see, I, I, I see it. I'm not, I'm not doing that again. But we may go through things and ask God why um, for a lesson or maybe even to be stronger or to grow stronger or to have our faith to grow stronger. So certain things may happen and we may ask God why, but we can't be afraid to ask God why. Why is this happening? In the book of James, uh, the first chapter, fifth verse, uh, it, it says, if any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives you uh, 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 the, the um, generosity to, uh, to, to, to give you the knowledge that you need. Amen. So that's a lesson learned that I learned uh, from being here on the stove, asking why. Uh, and, 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 and you'll learn uh, as you go through things and you're asking why, but you may build your faith and build those around you as well uh, because of uh, the things you may go through. Now, the darkness came upon as we read here in the word. It says the darkness came over and that darkness may have triggered um, of, of, of what Jesus said, what he said. And sometimes the darkness may come uh, over us. We may experience darkness situations or darkness things may happen in our life. But just because you may be going through a darkness or maybe going through a certain season doesn't mean that the light is there. It doesn't mean that hope isn't there. It doesn't mean that the sun isn't shining. Have you ever been on a plane before during a storm? And when you're on that plane, it is chaos. You see the lightning and the thunder going on. And as the pilot uh, goes up, you begin to go above the clouds and you begin to see the sun. That's right. You see the sun and that reminds you that, hey, everything is OK. I may be going through a storm right now, but if I continue to trust and believe and I, I know that the sun is going to shine, I know that if I look to the hills that I will be OK But just when it comes to everyday life life with us. If we focus on the sun, the S-O-N in Jesus, and he's the light of the world and he is going to shine in our lives. And whatever we're going through, whatever darkness that we may experience, we know that God is going to help us through it. We know that we're going to push on and we're going to fight on and we're going to keep the faith. And we know that God is going to be there for us. That's right. He's going to be there for us because he knows our pain. He's felt our pain. He's been on the cross. He's experienced the anguish, the torture. He's experienced it. So just realize that God is there for you during our worst times, during our worst moments. He's there to help us and we're never alone. And we know that Jesus understands. You know, he lived the life that we couldn't live. He died the death that we should have die but we're grateful and thankful for his grace and his mercy amen we're truly thankful amen amen well thank you uh for sharing your time here with me hopefully a word was said to bring you closer to christ happy resurrection sunday and god bless i'll see you have a good one